Being a master chef in the long dark doesn't just mean you're popular at barbecues. It can actually save your life. So today I want to talk about how to get the elusive master level five in cooking faster. Let's take a look at what it is first. Now, as we've mentioned, you're an amazing cook. And I love how it actually says, if people still had dinner parties, you'd be the talk of them. Ah, oh, Hinderlin, I love that humor. But let's go through some of the advantages you get from achieving that Master Chef rating. First, you get a 25% bonus from any cooked item. You actually create more calories. <laughs> how the laws of physics work that way, I don't know. I think it's basically you just don't lose as much in the cook-off process. You save all the grease and fat and tasty yummies. Best guess I can put forward. Additionally, there is no calorie loss when you're smashing open the cans. That's handy. You don't need a can opener anymore. You do achieve those earlier. Cooking time is reduced by 30%, which means you need fewer sticks, less firewood to actually cook the meal. Ready times increase by 20%. And if you're not familiar with what ready times are, that means how much time you have after you have cooked a meal before it burns. So if you're someone who has taken down an entire bear and you're doing the process of sleeping and cooking a couple of steaks, this gives you an extra room of um, safety uh, to actually take that one hour nap while you're cooking those steaks. But that's irrelevant. The most important reason that people want Master Chef Level 5 is you never get parasites or food poisoning. You get iron gut, and that will keep you alive. Now, a couple of details that people get fuzzy on this. It is retroactive, which means the steaks that you cooked at level three, they're good to go. Additionally, this includes processed foods. So the beans, the soups, and everything else that you cook, go ahead and eat. I do believe this also includes all of the processed foods, such as granola bars, ketchup chips, all of those uh, foods that you do find, go ahead and eat those. And allegedly, milk will still be available. However, I have died more times to bad milk than I can count. I'm just, for my own personal psychology, I'm never eating the ruined death milk. But that's my own personal decision. More to the actual facts of why you're here. The quest to Master Chef is very similar to the quest to Master Hunter. Cooking levels are based on skill points again. You start at 1, of course, and you need 25 points to get to level 2. 75 points total for 3, 150 for level 4, and then you need 300 points of cooking skill to reach level 5 cooking. Now let's talk about how do you earn points. Well, just like before, you can read it. By picking up the proper book, you can read for 10 points. No, not serve man. Not that book. This isn't that kind of a game. Correct. Kitchen Wilderness. That's the book you want to read. Yes. <laughs> Had to put that joke in. We've always joked about what we should do with all the dead people around. Had to put that one in. But reading is boring, especially in the quiet apocalypse. Let's get a little bit more active on how... You can more specifically earn those points. Now let's go back to those skill points that we were talking about. As previously discussed, to level up, you're going to need to earn those points through cooking, obviously. But one of the fundamental things that new players will need to learn is that skill points are per item. And to be very clear, skill points does not care about weight. That detail, that skill points are awarded per item you successfully cook off the fire, not about how much mass you cook, creates an exploit that we can use to our service to grossly accelerate our ability to cook faster and to level up our skill points. So let's look at a faster. realistic situation. Early games before level 5 cooking, you're also going to be dealing with the risk of intestinal parasites, which means 
you're not going to be able to eat all of the carnivore meat. You can't live on wolf and bear alone. We're going to need to work around that. Additionally, because this is going to be early games, this is something you're probably going to be dealing with possibly even hypothermia, cabin fever, other early game challenges. We can do this. Let me show you how. Now, I do believe location is half the battle here, so I am also going to vote for Mystery Lake as starting this out because with the ice huts and shelters around that, you have a lot of area to go hunting, both for the wolves in the standard territory, as well as the bear. That creates a lot of meat right there. But remember, we cannot live on carnivore meat alone. If you come up to the lake overview, you'll find that we have a good rabbit spawn right here. Now this is a place where I also recommend bringing your bow and arrow to work on increasing your archery skill, as previously mentioned. Bye. You guessed it, bunny bingo. And one more for the road. I love that. And sometimes right out your front door, you have venison. <laughs> I love that. Now the venison and the rabbit are going to be vitally important because that's the meat you can eat all the time to keep your strength up. Whereas bear and wolf, you have to eat limitedly. Wow, that was a good headshot too. Nicely. But there's a trick on harvesting it that's going to wind up helping you out a lot. Now we're all used to as much as possible. You just max it. Stop. Don't. One click. Take these things one pound at a time. Remember, weight is irrelevant. You want as many pieces as possible. In fact, keep it at one Take a look here. I'll show you that uh, the standard th uh, portion gave us a 1.10 pounds. All right. Keep it at one, but then hit harvest. And then before it's completed, hit escape. And I'll hop back into my inventory. And that shows you about half a pound of meat, an even smaller slice. And depending on how quick you hit the escape bar, set it to one, go to harvest, and then hit the escape bar quicker, you will get even smaller pieces, about tenths of pieces. Now this varies a little bit, but if you were to average a quarter pounder slice off of a average 20 pound deer, you would have 80 slices from a single harvest. That's a pretty good hit towards that goal for level five cooking. So let's actually start cooking. Now to begin with, I encourage you to do your cooking outside. Remember how we were talking about cabin fevers, a common fight? By doing your cooking outside, you will eliminate that variable. You're going to be by a fire anyway, so you're going to be by warmth. Now, I encourage you to do this in a smart place, such as outside of a safe location, just in case wolves or weather decide to disagree with you, but that's just common sense. Once you've got an outside fire going, then, this is your opportunity to start cooking all those 300 pieces of meat. Make sure you have firewood there. Now I admit this guide is focused on hunting, but I would be remiss if I did not mention that you also gain cooking points for all of the teas and coffees that you can brew up as well. So I warmly encourage you to do that also. I just focus on the hunting aspects because that gets you meat, that gets you fur, that gets you guts. And remember those rabbits? I'm a massive fan of when you're hunting rabbits, throw them in your backpack and then bring the entire rabbit back with you to harvest while you're working by the fire. And again, you want to cut these into small one pound pieces or smaller in order to create the most number of slices to cook to earn the most points possible. Oh wow, this is the first time in a while I've taken that drink for a painkiller. This video is actually the third in my quest for the long dark level five skill sets. If you want to know more, that's what this playlist is for. And if you want to know if I live to see tomorrow, leave a like and subscribe. I drop videos like this each week. I'm Commander Tom. I'll see you next time. Thanks.